I'm glad to know that we believe tonight. I didn't hear your applause for the Lord tonight. Amen. I believe. Do you believe that God's coming? Amen. I believe in the crucifixion. Amen. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I know one thing. I'm thankful that I do. You know, there's people out there, my friends, that don't believe in it. There really is. There's people in this world that does not believe in that. And you know what? I feel sorry for them. Do you tonight? I feel sorry for them. I ask that the Lord will open their eyes. I know he's doing his best, but they're not receiving. So, you know, we got to pray, guys, that the world opens their eyes. Because we know that he's coming soon. You can just look around and see all the evidence and see all the proof that we need tonight. Amen. I told you this morning, I want to recap a little bit of this morning's message so you'll understand what this message is going to lead into. I talked this morning about commitment. Well, that kind of goes with that song that we just heard. If we don't believe in Jesus, if we don't believe in the Holy Spirit, what are you going to commit to? You're going to be committed, all right, but it's not going to be into the heaven with our God. Amen? So in commitment, we talked this morning about what we have to do, and we're there now. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that we have committed ourselves, that we have committed our church, that we have committed the people of this church to truly do the things that God wants us to do and has called us to do, okay? We touched on three verses this morning that was very important of what to do with commitment. Now, I told you tonight's sermon was going to be about stockpile. Does everybody know what stockpile means? We gather things. We store up. We put hay in the barn come on you put cans in the cupboard right you try to put money aside to pay this or pay that you try to stockpile things of life we're going to talk tonight of course as we always do about spiritually spiritually commitment this morning is what we talked about we can commit ourselves to many things amen but we want to be spiritual and i will be reminding you from now on through the service tonight that spiritually is what we're after. Amen? Is it okay to stockpile our groceries? Yes, it is. Is it okay to stockpile a little money to try to pay this or pay that? Yes, it is, because I believe that's called wisdom. Amen? And that wisdom is from above. And I thank God for our wisdom to be able to stockpile that. But we're going to not talk about groceries and things tonight. We're going to talk about what it's going to take to stockpile God's Word into our heart. We read the Word, we study the Word, we go to Bible studies, we go to Sunday school, we go to church sermons. Guess what, my friends? <clears throat> this is the Word of God that you need to start stockpiling, okay? Everything you hear, and I know you've already been doing this, everything you hear from the church, everything you hear from the Sunday school lessons and the Bible school lessons, I'm telling you now, we need to stockpile. Okay, let's let's spiritually get into this tonight and open up a vault in our body, in our temple that we can start stockpiling things of God. Do you believe we're going to need it? I do. Do you believe that uh, we need every scripture that we can get? Well, most of you in here is probably like me. I can't hardly memorize anything. Okay, I'm, I'm always thankful for that one verse. Jesus whipped. I got that one. Boy, that's about as far as it goes. Amen? Because it is hard. But who believes this tonight? My Bible tells me, if we are committed, if we truly live for God, and we get into a situation, God just says, open your mouth. What's he say he'll do? He said he'll fill it of him. Can you remember the day he filled it and it wasn't? I mean, you filled it and he didn't fill it? And you unloaded See, you could think of plenty of things to say. But do you believe this tonight? When we're truly committed for God, and when we stockpile scriptures, when we stockpile things that we've heard in Bible lessons and sermons and, and even out of songs, that song we just heard, there was a lot of good stuff in that right there. I believe in the crucifixion. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Do you believe this tonight? That needs to be stockpiled into you too. Huh? We are not going to get, now let me go ahead and say it like this. You're not going to get too much of God's word. That's right. Do you believe that? That's right. 
You can't have enough of God's Word. You take a book and you read it. I'm not a reader, but I could just about imagine. You take a book and you read it. It's done, right? It's over. You know the story pretty well. You know you know how it started. You know how it got in the middle, and you know how it ended. You're done with it. I wouldn't think you'd go back and read it, but maybe some people do. The Bible? Yeah, but what is it? A spiritual Christian. I'm talking about just a little novel or just whatever, or just a little book of, you know, that's got a little story to it. But what I'm trying to say is, if we stockpile from this Bible and stockpile and stockpile, you'll never fill your barn up. But I do know this tonight. We want to get it as full as we can get it. So we're going to ask God to help us see what I'm talking about tonight, to help us understand what it means to stockpile the things of him, to gather the things of him, to, to I guess we could say, to hoard the things of him, to accumulate the things of him. You know, the temple, which is what? You and I, we are the temple. God said we are designed to hold his word, right? God said we are designed by him to be a Christian on this old lost world. Is that what he says? I'm paraphrasing all this, but you know what I'm talking about. He says we're here to be a servant. He says we're here to be a witness. He says we're here to be a tool to the lost, to the, to the, uh, to the, the backsliders, huh? Yeah. To the sick, yeah. to the bedridden, right. to the people that used to come to church that just quit going to church. God says, I need you. You know, the Bible also tells us, my friends, that there's a lot of work out here that needs to be done. But the laborers are few. Is that what the word says? Do you all, all of you know what that means? Isn't it true, Brother Mark? There is plenty. I'm telling you guys, there's plenty of work out there to be done. But there is just not enough of us. That's another thing that we need to be praying about. God we need more help. Is that okay to say? We do. We need more help. We need more people. <clears throat> we need more people to be converted to come and help us spread God's word. Well, not just anybody can do that. Am I right? What does it take to be able to become a servant? What did we talk about this morning? complete commitment you can't go out and witness for god and be a servant for god and be a half-hearted part-timed every once in a while so-so christian you're making a mockery to god you are slapping god in the face when you go out there and act like you're holier than thou and not in church half the time. Never pick the Bible up. Never pray. Come on, my friends. Let's get real here. I want to stay on the roll that we're on. I want to stay on this commitment that we're on. And if we stay on this commitment that God has put us on, it's a journey. Does all of you know that? It's a journey. It's a big journey. And God didn't tell me anywhere in that Bible that it would be an easy path. As a matter of fact, you've been told this before. The harder you live for Jesus, whoa, the harder it seems sometimes. Does it not? It gets a little bit rough out there. But God says he'll get us through it. I use the word tough a lot because I really feel that a Christian has to be tough. Is that okay to say? I do. I believe we got to be tough. We got to be strong and we got to be willing <clears throat> to sacrifice. Uh oh. Now that's where people fail a lot of times. Sacrifice. A lot of people don't even like that word, let alone want to take a hold of that word. So let's get into God's word tonight about the stockpile. I think I've given you enough of this morning's recap to flow right into stockpile tonight. I have one verse. That's how good this is tonight. One verse single verse and it's going to be very very good i want you to go to second john one nine 
Second John 1 9. The name is Stockpile tonight. As you're getting there, if you want to get there, that's fine. It is on the screen also. I really and truly would rather you look it up in your Bibles. From now on, it is there for the ones that maybe come in without a Bible. It is there for the ones that maybe come in and forgot their glasses or just whatever the situation might be. And I like to kind of walk around and read it off the word, off the screen, and keep looking up there myself. But it's very important. Do you believe this tonight? To have your Bible with you? To have it turned to the correct page? And let's stay on the same page together tonight. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for the opportunity and the privilege to stand behind your pulpit tonight. Lord, I ask that I can give this word correctly, Lord. It's the word of you that you told me to say. You titled it. You said to call it Stockpile. When I first heard that, Lord, I needed a little bit of explaining, but I understand now what it's about, and I pray that the people do. Help us, Lord, to be all we can be. Help us to be everything we can be. In Jesus' name, if everybody can say amen. amen. Huh. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Boy, that's so good. We're coming back in a minute, okay? He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and Son. Let's make this 1 John 1, 9a and 9b tonight, okay? We're going to be stuck on this first sentence for a little while tonight. And we're going to talk about whoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Do you believe tonight... That there is people out in, or 2 John. Did I tell everybody 2 John? Did I say it right? Okay, I just think I said first there a minute ago. Okay, 2 John first nine, one nine. Let me read it to you out of the NLT. For if you wander beyond the teaching of Christ, you will not have fellowship with God. Now that's part A. Let's talk about that for a minute. Does everybody here tonight believe in the word of God? Truly you believe in it. Amen? Let us not be fooled by man or by any preacher or teacher. You have enough of that in you, don't you? You know when your ears are being tickled. You know if you're being taught or preached something that's not correct. Do you not? Isn't that wonderful to know? There is some people out there today sitting in churches that has not stockpiled enough of God's information to determine a false prophet from a real preacher. Wow, got quiet in here. There is people out there that has not stockpiled the evidence, the proof, the truth of God's word. When they go to a church and they hear a false prophet, they just fall right into it. Sounds good. Oh, especially that candy coating, especially that sugar coating. Man, it's all good. See, I feel for people like that. Whose fault is it? Well, it's mostly their fault, but it's some other people's faults at time, too. We have false prophets to blame. We have false family members sometimes that think they know it all of the Bible. And they've been taught something, and they did not stockpile enough of God's information, so they keep spreading it. Amen? And they keep spreading it. And it keeps on running down the line. The judgment line is coming, and we have to be sure. we got to be sure that we've stockpiled enough of God's information. If you'll look at that first half of that, Second John 1, 9a, to me, that tells me, if we don't truly know God's word we don't have God is that what that says to you does everybody agree with me on that is that what it looks like to you well some says wow God's bold wow God's rude no God's just truthful and God loves us he tells us if we do not abide in the doctrine of Christ what is the doctrine of Christ what is that my friends it's the teachings, and it's the Word, and it's the proof of God. It's your teachers and your preachers and your pastors that is supposed to be bringing you the complete fullness of God's Word. 
Lord, help us grow. Help us grow into the likeness of you. Help us to be fulfilled. Let our, let our minds realize when deceitment, when falseness tries to slip its way into the church. I can just see that door back there open a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I can just see it open during every service. This is spiritually speaking. And things is trying to creep in. You follow what I'm saying? Thing, what is it? It's deceit. It's lies. It's sugar. It's all these things that add up. And if a pastor of a church, as for instance myself, can't have enough spirituality to see that crack and be able to close that door, this church is going to be deceived. It happens. It happens. And it's happening as I speak in many, many, many places. Part of my journey was God said, you know what, boy? Better get that place in order. God said, you better take things under control of the way I'm telling you to do it or bad things will happen. I love each and every one of you. I don't want to see anything bad happen to you. I don't want anything bad to go wrong. But what do we do? We got to stay into the doctrine of God because he reminded me. If you're not doing everything, if you're not totally committed, well, this hurt when I first heard that. If you're not totally committed to me, you don't have me. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Think about that, Sister Debbie. Now, sometimes maybe we don't think of things like that. Sometimes we think we're okay. Sometimes we think, I have God. Yeah, you can say you have God all you want to say that, right? But do you really know that? We've all been there. What a peace of mind tonight, my friends, to know that we have God. What an inner peace of reliability that we have in our Savior, knowing that if he came right now, we're going to be okay. Knowing that if somebody come blaring through that door, Lord forbid, but I tell you what, you just never know, do you? Is every one of you, if that happens, are you going to be able to stand up? Are you? If that man or that woman or that gang or that crew comes through that door with shotguns, Stand up if you're a Christian so I can lay you over with this gun. You going to be able to do it? Praise God. You know, I tell you what, that might sound a little bit far-fetched, but let me tell you something, my friends. It happens. And it don't just happen in huge cities, right? It happens in little bitty places. Am I trying to scare you? No. I'm trying to build your faith. I'm trying to get you... As we say, we're fully committed right now. I'm trying to remind you of some of these things that go with commitment. You probably hadn't thought of that one. In fact, the Lord brought that to my recognition tonight. we got to be ready. I want to know that I'm in the right doctrine of God. I want to know that I believe in the crucifixion. I want to know that I believe in Jesus Christ. I want to know that I believe in the Holy Spirit because I want to know that I know that I know that I have God. Amen? That's important to me. How important is that to you tonight? Just to know that we have that. We're not done with this part of this scripture yet. You know, guys... When we are baptized in Christ, His Spirit is actually, well, we're clothed with Christ, I guess I should say. When we're baptized, we are clothed with the Spirit of Christ. God says, here, I'm going to give you this Holy Spirit. Here, you're to take this Holy Spirit. You're to use it. You're to manifest it. You're to multiply the things that I have for you. Amen? Baptism is a great thing, but you know, leaving all jokes aside tonight, we all need the Holy Spirit, period. Isaiah 66, 2 tells us to be a true disciple. <laughs> you must tremble when God speaks. I touched on that last week about Moses. You know, 
I imagine Moses trembled a lot. What do you think? Because God was there and God was talking to him and God was ministering to his heart. And Moses got away and Moses said, you know what? I want more of you, God. And I don't know that we say that enough today, my friends. I want more of you, God. I need you more. I don't think we say that enough. Me and my little wife was heading to Lake Charles the other day. <clears throat> we had a flat. And I thought I heard it coming. There was always something passing you, so I had to wait till that next car got by. She was on the phone with somebody. I went ahead and worked my way over and found me a good spot to get off that old busy interstate. Amen. And I got off on the side of the road. That's no big deal. I know how to change a tire if I can't, Sister Sue does, right? <laughs> I said, now, Lord... I know I have a jack. Now, Lord, I know I got a four-way. And here's the good part, Lord. I know I got a tire up under this truck. And it was almost like the devil said, hey, you know it's got air in it. Amen. Well, how often do you pull your spare out? Right. Mine was kind of stuck, as a matter of fact, because I try to keep good tires on our stuff because we're on the interstate all the time. And I said, devil, you're a liar. I don't care if it's half flat, as long as it gets me to Lake Charles where I can get some air. Well, I tell you what, everything worked out to the best because God knew. And I told my wife, I said, you know, every time I change oil in my truck, I try to go back there and check that old spare hanging over there with the gauge. Because you know what? Some people use God like a spare tire. And when they need him and they haven't lived for him, it's like going and getting that spare. Well, Brother Durr, what if it wouldn't have had any air in it? What good would that have done? I could have left my other flat tire on there. Yeah. Well, I get dirty and sweaty and change the tire for a flat one, right? That's right? So I think, you know, we do. So many people use God as a spare tire. But you know what? I'm glad to know that I was committed. May I sometimes forget to check the air in this spare? Of course, I'm human like you are. But do you believe this tonight? I do. I believe the last time I did my oil change, God reminded me to check that spare tire. Oh, yeah, I got new tires on my truck. Guess what? That don't mean nothing. It makes you feel better. And you have that peace knowing that you're riding on good tires, but you still have a flat. So when we pulled over and I changed that tire and I let that... You know, the devil, he still hit me, right? Boy, I kicked that old tire. It felt pretty good. When it hit the ground, clunk, it sounded pretty good. When I put it on the truck, it looked good. That devil tried to tell me, when you let that jack down, that thing going to go to the ground. <laughs> but he probably don't talk to you like that, does he? No, because you don't change the spare, but any other thing he does. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That was a good pointer, wasn't it? That'd be like telling Sister Debbie, go out and change my spare tire, wouldn't it? Huh? Right? She could probably do it better than Bro Scotty, though. No, that's right. You know how to do tires, don't you? You got plenty of experience, don't you, brother? Tires, yeah. yeah, with tires, yes. I said, devil, you're a liar. I didn't let that jack down easy. I went, Pff, I let that truck drop to the ground. I said, check it out, devil. Stomp on that old devil. Because I was committed to God, and I knew that God was going to keep me safe. And I knew God was going to get us off of that road. Amen? But if I wouldn't have been committed to him, and I would have thought I was a big shot and not had God have a feeling my tire would have been flat <clears throat> and you know that's a long ways for sister sue to walk for an air gun amen so you know i'm sure she was praying too amen <laughs> yeah that's what i was thinking i thought i could steer and let her push actually huh well let us get started by reading the word of god with a sincere open mind and spirit do you read the word of god with a sincere an open mind and spirit. I pray that you do. Every one of us should stockpile in our minds as much as the Bible as we can. It was the word of Christ that transformed all the apostles. Remember that? Paul taught this. You'll remember this. It's in the Bible. It's in Colossians 3.16. If you want to jot it down, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Colossians 3.16. We believe in God. That's, that's neat how that song was played tonight because I've got this written down. Do you believe the Word of God? Do you believe in God? 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, you do. Of course you do. If you didn't, why would you be here? There's football games on. You could be resting. It's a pretty day. There's lots of things you could be doing. But by the way, I thank all of you for being here tonight. Amen? Because it is easy. It is easy to say, I don't think I'll go this time. It is, it is easy to say, I'm tired. It is easy sometimes to say, it'll be okay. No, it's not okay. We need to be in church every opportunity that we can. Sure, sometimes we're sick. Sometimes we go on vacation. Sometimes we have to work. God knows all that. You know what I'm saying tonight. We need to be there if at all possible. Is it the things of the world, problems in your home, living for your spouse, job, etc.? Is things like that trying to keep you from living for God? If it is, you got to get rid of it. You got to let all your problems go. Now, let's go to part B. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Do you get that tonight? I want the Father and and the son do you i can't have the father without the son am i right what does it take to get to the lord you have to go through jesus am i right so i can't have just the father and why would i just want the son when i can have both I think it's okay to be greedy right now. I want all three. Yep. It's not. It's okay. Let's be greedy. I want the Father. I want the Son. I want the Holy Spirit. I want it all. I want the Trinity. I want the Triune. I want all three. I want everything to dwell in my life because you know what? I believe if you're missing one of them, you're missing part of the action. Right. I believe if you're missing one of them, you can't. You can't be complete. You're not committed complete commitment that's what it takes because it says in your word tonight that if we are not we cannot have god we got to realize this tonight guys we got to have the father the son the holy spirit he's got to dwell in our lives and when he does your spare will never be flat when he does you're going to see that things is going to go much, much better. Sometimes we have some rough roads to go down, don't we? And sometimes being a Christian, some of us probably think, man, this is a rough life. Some Christians have given up. You know why? It just got too rough for them. But do you believe this tonight? It's rougher now. They might not believe it at the time. But when they lose their faith, when they lose their doctrine, when they lose their Christianity, the Bible says it's really bad for backsliders. And I know of some, do you? Do you know a backslider or two or three or several dozen of them? I do, do you? Do you feel for them tonight? We need to have special prayer for the backsliders because I totally believe that there's a lot of them out there that thinks, you know, maybe you've been in that position one day in your life. You think you could make it without God. You thought that everything would be okay. You thought that it's all going to be fine. It's not. We can't do it. So to stockpile things in our life, we have to honor him. Amen? We have to worship him. Do we praise God enough? You know, I'm continuously looking back here at this picture. That's why I have Jesus hanging there. It's all about him. It's all about him and nothing but him. But we have to remember tonight, guys. We have to establish ourselves with holiness. We have to establish ourselves with the faith of God's word. We have to establish in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, and in our spirits 
to stockpile the things that God has for us. God has only wonderful things for you. God has only pleasurable things for you. Now, God does say that he will test you. Amen? God says that he will let us run into situations where we're probably going to wonder what's going on. But as you said, Sister Henry, if we're complete, we're going to make it. You know, I kind of touched on this several times this morning, guys. If we're not, <laughs> you know, I'm saying this about the backslider. I'm saying this about people that's out in the world. I'm saying this about people that's going to churches that's not hearing the real truth. If you are not 100% committed and complete in Christ, you're not going to make it. And you know, the first thing you thought of, you're not going to make it to heaven. Well, that's what I mean also. But here's something else I mean. You're not going to make it very good in life. Even till death comes, even till the rapture comes, even till God comes back, you're going to have a rough go because you knew better. See, we're so without excuse. Amen. And the backsliders, they've got all kinds of excuses that God's saying, no. No more excuses. Let's keep this. Let's stay committed, church. Let's stay complete. Let's stay in the likeness of Christ. Let's stay knowing what the what the what the three is, what the what the triune is. Let's stay knowing what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is tonight. Amen. Stockpile. I don't know about you, but I want to stockpile all that I can stockpile. You know, for the ones that don't know it, I stockpile cars. And boy, I mean, I really do stockpile them. I'm really starting to pile them now. I'm building a wall. Somebody came in the other day and said, what are you doing, building a wall? I started to say, yeah, keep the enemy out, amen? But I'm building a wall of cars because it's the wise thing to do. You got to save up. You got to store up. You know, every time you go get a little something, every time you go buy this, or every time you go buy, go buy this, you can't just cash it right back in, right? Sometimes you, you buy something to make a little money with. If you buy something and you go sell it for less than what you bought it for, well, guess what? You get kind of hungry after a while, right? So you've got to use your wisdom. Spiritually speaking, stockpiling God's Word. Let that wall build. Let it build up. Let it build up and build up and build up. I don't mean to put anybody down that, but there might come a day you can't read God's Word. That's right. That's right. Now, come on. Come on. Yeah, that's true. There might be a day you can't read God's Word. And you're going to think back that Sunday night. Ooh, I remember what that big mouth preacher was saying now. Boy, if we would only stop, Paul. And God, forgive me, but I just didn't quite read enough. Don't want to be there, do you? Okay, what do we got to do? We got to read. We got to study. We got to build it up. We've got to stockpile God's information. You know, they say computers <laughs> apparently hold lots of stuff. We got a little bitty card. It's called SD card back there in that recorder that's about that big. That thing will hold and hold and hold and hold stuff. And I remember when stuff like that first came out, I'm thinking, how does all that stuff get in there? But I'm going, to <laughs> I'm going to compare that to us spiritually. That's what we are. We're just a little bitty speck. Yeah. Are we not? Yeah. We're just a little bitty speck. But God says, I can fill you. Yeah. God says, I can fill you abundantly till you spill over. Sometimes we mess our own blessings up. The Bible tells me that blessings would overflow us. I used to say this quite often. Lord, keep filling me up. We all like them blessings, don't we? Don't go stand in the ditch and let it run off. Get next to somebody. Get next to a brother or sister. Let it run off into them. In closing tonight, God's good, isn't he? Amen. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Does everybody believe 
what that says because that simply tells you tonight if you do not be 100 percent committed if you are not complete if you don't believe in the true doctrine of god god says you do not have him right. do you believe that tonight right. yeah. simple isn't it let's go to b i'm glad to know we're in part b tonight what you guys think amen he she all of you that abideth in the doctrine of christ he she all of you will have both the Father and the Son. Are you thankful for that tonight? Amen. To know that you have that peace and that you have that comfort of having the Father and the Son. It's wonderful, isn't it? Commitment leads to stockpiling, which in turn pays well. John eight thirty one. You are truly my disciples if you keep obeying my teachings. Well, let me touch on teachings just for a minute in closing. He means his word is what he's talking about. My teachings. That's what he means, correct? But he's also give preachers and teachers and evangelists and people like that the knowledge to read his word, to spread his word. Amen. But what he means by that is this, Brother Bobby, 100%. I said earlier that if we are not truly committed, you're not going to speak the true words of Christ. Right? If you're not truly committed with Christ, you're not going to be able to absorb the words of God correctly. Now, let me, let me say this. We have to begin somewhere. Beginners that start with the word of God. It is hard on them for a while. But God says, keep on studying. I'll give that to you. We'll never, ever learn it all. Am I right? And you know, I think that's so cool to say about the Bible because in saying that, that right there should just be the first thing you should think of. How do we ever quit reading the Bible? We don't quit reading the Bible. Well, that's kind of a letdown. We'll never learn it all. No, it's not. That should be a positive speech for you. Keep reading keep reading God's word. How many of you, a lot of you has been Christians for years, and you'll read something, and then all of a sudden you'll go, oh, yeah. is that what that meant? Yes. Oh, yeah. If you've been there, sister, I never thought of it that way. And you want to go, really? But I'm saying this to say this. It's true. We can read and read and read. Isn't that neat about God's word? That's true. <clears throat> if you look at that scripture right there, that's two sermons in one. I mean, think about that. And if you don't read that scripture spiritually and committed, you'd lose part of that. Or you wouldn't understand part of that and you'd just keep on jumping. But let me tell you something. That right there can be broken half because that's a flip-flop right there. Amen? But it all does what? goes together that's another problem we have we don't truly try to understand the scriptures sometimes we don't truly try to put them together but thank god thank god for his mercy thank god for his wisdom that he gives us to read amen i'm so thankful for that father in jesus name we thank you for the sermon that was brought forth this night I pray that it ministers to everyone's heart. I thank you for the words that you've given me to say. Lord, let us realize what stockpile means tonight, Lord. I know that everyone in here caught it, and I just pray that whoever listens to this CD will catch it tonight. Lord, everything we pull from that Bible, everything that we hear from a preacher, everything that we hear from a teacher, Lord, let us stockpile it in our minds, in our hearts, in our souls, in our spirits. There may come a day, Lord, we all realize the Bibles might be taken away. We could lose our eyesight. There's many things that could happen where we wouldn't have your word no more. So, Lord, we're asking for a filling. We're asking for a spiritual filling tonight. Lord, let us remember the word stop, Paul. Let us remember to let it keep adding up in our lives. Your word is so thick. 
your word is so rich. That's right. We'll never, we'll never learn it all. But I believe that's part of the point. Let us to continue to dig and read and study your word. Help us, Lord. Just keep us on that straight and narrow path. In Jesus' name, if all could say, amen. Well, God is good. Amen. And I love him for what he does for each and every one of us. Amen. So remember, my friends, we got to keep on stockpiling. Amen. By the way, don't forget, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock is what? Open Bible study. Who's got it this week? Okay, Sister Vi. Who's got it next week? All right, then both them guys are awake. How about that? Praise the Lord. So just remember, we know what's going on. Don't forget. Of course, Lord willing, I hope to see all of you.